In this video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days in Egypt in Hardcore Minecraft. I'll have to watch out for extreme weather and aggressive mobs, all while exploring the countless man-made and natural wonders that Egypt has to offer. And who knows, maybe I'll encounter a pharaoh or two. But with that being said, let's get into the video. I spawned in and almost immediately realized that I wasn't in a great spawn. Yeah, this is probably not the best spawn I've had. Everywhere I went, there were just more rocks and sand. Until I eventually spotted an animal. And then another one. That's when I noticed that my climate clemency would be wearing off soon. Meaning I would start to feel the heat. And so, I needed to find water or shade. I figured that if I walked in one direction for long enough, I'd surely find water. However, this didn't exactly happen immediately. But as I ran out of hunger, I looked around me, only to see something hopeful off in the distance. Now I just have to walk over there. Yet, as I walked towards the greenery, the heat started to affect me. It's worn off. Okay. Let's go. Come on, come on. Oh, 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 we have a lot of bad animals. Alright. But I got in the water and cooled off. Then I was finally able to get started and get some wood. As I did so, I realized that I was getting a bit too close to this crocodile. That's not what I want to be near. Anyways, I got my wood and soon enough came up with the idea to make a tiny farm. After all, the Egyptians were famous for their irrigation. And so, I planted my wheat seeds and then burrowed underground as the sun set because I didn't have a bed yet. But I didn't mind that, as I soon discovered some stone, and promptly got to work on mining it. In fact, this is what I spent the whole night doing. And the next morning, I resurfaced only to see some rather eerie mobs lurking in the desert. That's, that's unsettling, that's really, un what is that? But I soon forgot about that as I got a bit too close to a skeleton. Anyways, mobs aside, it was time for me to get some food, and my genius irrigation system was going to take a while. So I killed some fish and then cooked them. I then decided that my goal for the moment should be to find iron. That way I can make shears and craft leaf armor, which protects me from the heat. And so, I went to go and find some. Except my mind was unexpectedly occupied. That's not what I wanted to see. That's... you shouldn't be in my mind. So, I instead decided to craft some glass bottles so that I could fill my thirst bar. Finally though, the sun began to set. And so, I made a new mine and got to work on trying to find some iron. Once again, I mined stacks and stacks of cobblestone until I eventually did find what I was looking for. Ooh, okay. I then smelted it. And the next morning, I crafted my shears and then resurfaced. I sheared some leaves and crafted myself the leaf armor. Now I wouldn't be affected by the intense heat of the desert. And with that being said, I was ready to begin my travels, and so I harvested my crops, and with a huge yield of nothing but seeds, I set off down the river. Only this wasn't just any river. The Nile is easily the most well-known river in the world as it is also recognized as the longest river, sitting at just over 4,000 miles long. To put that into perspective, it cuts through 11 of Africa's countries, supplying wildlife and water to each of them. But even more incredibly, it is believed that this ancient river hasn't changed course for over 30 million years. And as I rode along the immortal river, I decided to interact with some of its wildlife. Magic trick. Oh, it's definitely coming after me. Bad ideas aside, I soon spot a huge sandstone cliff, which I thought was rather interesting. But I quickly got distracted as I tried to mount this camel. Anyways, as I returned to the Nile, I finalized my plans to make a large riverboat for this series, rather than a normal base. I think the idea of sailing down the Nile in my very own riverboat is too cool to pass up. However, my scheming was soon interrupted by an unexpected burst of rain. And by unexpected, I mean oddly nice. As I sailed, I eventually came into a much wider part of the river. And as I did so, I was hoping to find a structure of some kind with either string or wool so that I could craft a bed. But as the sun set, there was no such structure in sight. 
However, I didn't really mind that, as the environment around me was really cool. But as I rode further down the Nile, something came into view. Ooh, okay. I hopped on the sailboat, okay, and crafted myself a bed. On day four, I woke up on the riverboat, only to see a horde of drowned attacking these villagers. Yeah, that's... that's a situation, isn't it? But I had more important things to do, like loot this boat. The loot was pretty good, as I got a crossbow from the chest. I then decided to look at this crafting recipe for a ship helm, which is something I would need in order to make a riverboat. And this is when I remembered that it included one gold bar, which won't be easy to find. I soon came across this green space with lots of fauna and grass, and after exploring it for a while, I didn't find anything too interesting. And so, I went to sleep. And the next morning, I stepped back towards the water. And that's when I spotted one of Egypt's ancient wonders. The Abu symbol is an elaborate temple built for the pharaoh Ramses II, following his death. In fact, the four statues on the outside are all of Ramses, but this temple is no less elaborate on the inside. Yet Abu symbol isn't just a staple of Egyptian history, but rather world history, as this incredible structure was built over 3,000 years ago. Either way, I was ready to take a look at it. But before I entered, I crafted a shield, just in case any mobs decided to show up. But as I walked through the temple, I didn't end up fighting any. And I eventually got to the last room, where I decided to take a little piece. My plan was to take a small piece of every place I went, so I could put it on my riverboat. But as I turned around, I saw a chest. And loot inside was pretty great. I collected these Roman armor pieces, and this Anubis blade, which looked really cool. After leaving Abu Simbel, I tested my new blade out on this lizard, which I ended up one-shotting. I then kept exploring the area, which is when I ended up at this group of small lakes. From here, I decided to set up camp and cook some food. On day 6, I woke to a crocodile performing a death roll on a fish. No, oh, just did the death roll, or whatever it's called. I then cooked the rest of my food and headed back towards Abu Simbel, so that I could rejoin the Nile. This time, I decided to head in the opposite direction though. And as I passed the sailboat from earlier, I saw a bit of a funny situation. Eventually, I rode my way back into the grassy area, and found myself a little hill to climb. And that night, the view around me was oddly really nice. Next morning, I took a look around me, only to realize that this grassy area is actually one of Egypt's national parks. The Jebel Elba National Park is a large collection of mountains and wildlife that lies right on the border of Egypt and Sudan. These thin and jagged mountains get their unique shape from bordering the Red Sea and are home to many species of endangered animals. Wildlife and geography aside, these mountains are truly a spectacle. And as I traversed the green land around them, I couldn't help but stop and look every two minutes. I also had my sights set on climbing one of the taller ones later on in the series. And as the evening sun set, I got just a few more incredible views. But as day 8 rolled around, I knew I had to get it moving. Not only was I out of water, but I also wanted to start my riverboat and that would require me finding gold somewhere. As I reached the Nile, some more rain began to fall, and I rode alongside the mountains until they eventually disappeared from my sight. I made sure to row away from where I came, as if I rode any further south, I would be in Sudan, and I'm supposed to be surviving 100 days in Egypt, so I don't really think that would go over well, but I made it a good distance up the Nile before nightfall. And the next morning, I killed some scorpions. Should I see how hard these guys hit? Okay. Well, I do have my Numis blade. Eventually, I came across these snakes. What is that? Why, why is it inflated in the back of you? And witnessed an animal kingdom crime. Why did you eat that? That was your friend. Before heading back to the Nile. 
After all, my only hope for finding gold was to find a structure containing it. And it was more than likely that my next structure would be along the Nile. On day 10 though, I decided to give in to the draw of the desert and give it a proper look. I guess I'd gotten sick of the Nile, and was maybe a bit curious as to what could be out in the dry and desolate landscape. But as I walked further and further into the sandy dunes, I realized that this might not have been a good idea. With the Nile out of my sight, and my last piece of food about to be eaten, I was in a rough spot. But this only got rougher as I stopped sprinting in order to reduce my hunger, as this left me to explore the desert at a snail's pace. Eventually though, night did fall, and I made camp. I woke up on day 11 and was happy when I found something that might drop food, this lizard. And after killing it, the lizard did in fact drop food. What is... what? This gave me the idea to go hunting in this rocky area. But after killing a few tortoises, I realized that most of these animals won't drop anything. But I continued hunting for the rest of the day. And even the lizards stopped dropping things eventually. But the next day, I knew I had to move on. I crossed a lot more desert, but I was still really slow. And this desert really did feel infinite. But finally on day 13, while I was hunting this rabbit, I saw something hopeful in the distance. What was that? However, it turned out to be one of Egypt's natural landmarks. The White Desert National Park is one of the most alien looking places on the continent of Africa. But there's a reason why. This stretch of chalk and limestone are the remnants of a once vibrant ocean floor that sat here, in the Sahara Desert millions of years ago. Countless years of erosion and global change are to blame for the incredibly strange Arctic landscape that you see here. But don't take my word for it. If you're ever in Egypt, go give it a visit yourself. I explored the national park and eventually came across one of the famous rock formations known as White Rock, although this one was made up of a certain block that I might be able to utilize. Getting some snow, and hopefully heating up the snow, and turning it into water. We'll see how this goes. Next morning, I attempted my snow block plan. And after a few seconds of waiting, I figured that it wouldn't work. But at least this inspired me to cross even more desert. And yes, I still couldn't sprint. But finally, as day 15 rolled around, I saw something else in the distance. And this time... It wasn't chalk. See, the, the one direction theory really works. If you just walk in one direction, you'll get somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's how Magellan circumnavigated the world, isn't it? He's like, if I just go in this one direction, if I keep going long enough, I'll just come back to where I am now. The area I'd found not only had water, but tons of lush fauna and wildlife as well. I explored the area and jumped in the water. I also refilled my water and got myself healed up. And that night, as I explored, I caught a glimpse of where I was. The Siwa Oasis is a tropical paradise situated in the western part of Egypt's extreme deserts. Historically, this oasis was home to the Oracle of Amun, who famous historical figures like Alexander the Great visited. But now this oasis sits as not only a hidden travel destination, but a lesser known glimpse into Egypt's monumental past. And as I explored a very small piece of this hidden paradise, I really liked what I saw. Well, apart from the scorpions. Okay, oh, that's just a jump scare. It's not funny. This is also when I noticed that my Anubis blade was starting to wear down. But I was soon distracted by all of the helpful loot I was finding, like this food. Alright, I shall join you all in your slumber. I, th I have second thoughts, actually. I, I don't want to do that anymore. Next morning, I decided that it was time to move on. After all, my quest for gold had been disappointing, to say the least. But I hiked the nearby mountains, and that's when a storm began. Okay. And that's also when I heard a strange noise. I don't know that noises, but I'm not a fan. 
The morning of day 18, I awoke to see one of the strange creatures again. Is that what was causing the noise? And I assumed that it must be making this weird whirring noise that I kept hearing. And so naturally, I shot at it. But after collecting my things, I continued onward. And I found myself in the middle of the Siwa salt pools. These were really cool little pools of water that contain over 90% salt in them, causing it to float when you swim. However, salt lakes aside, the scenery around me was incredibly unique. I've never seen a place like this in any of my programs, and that's how I had felt about Egypt in general so far. But that afternoon, I spotted yet another group of trees in the distance. Oh, I see trees. Next morning, I approached these trees only to see that this was not in fact the Nile. It was either the Red Sea or the Mediterranean Sea, as it was way too big to be a river. Oh, well, something tells me that this isn't the Nile. <laughs> but, if this was the Mediterranean, then I could row along the shore until I found where the Nile feeds into it. And so, that was my plan. Until a thunderstorm came and I went to sleep. But the next day, I enacted my plan. I was going to row along this shore until I found the Nile. And this is also when I did some self-realization, as I noted that my quest for gold was going pretty terribly. But I didn't give up. I went inland to take a look at where I was, only to find more desert. And maybe this is when I should mention that this map is by far the biggest map I've done. But with that being said, I kept rowing down the maybe Mediterranean. However, everything changed on day 21 when I found a river, and with my limited knowledge of Egyptian rivers, I figured that this must be the Nile, and so I continued down the river until I spotted something interesting. As I got closer, it became obvious that I had come across some sort of pillager village. I quickly crafted an iron pickaxe and broke what spawners I found. Boom. Okay. And then I took a look at what loot was here. Oh, okay. Alright, yes, we are properly in business. This was huge, as I could now finally craft my ship helm, and the other loot I found was pretty good too. I looted the buildings and didn't have much pillager trouble, and then I went back to the Nile only to realize that this section of the Nile was really thin, almost too thin for a boat. And so, the next morning, I got to work on designing something that could fit through these thin stretches of river, but also looked halfway decent. I crafted the helm and went to craft the floaters, but that's when I realized that I needed string. And so, I went back to the village. Now, floaters are important for the ship as they keep it afloat. I also had to make sure that I spread the floaters out evenly, or my ship wouldn't be buoyant. So on day 23, when I actually started building the ship, this is what I focused on. This day was mostly spent building my Nile riverboat and collecting materials. And on day 24, I finally finished my ship. Is it the prettiest ship I've made? No, definitely not. Will it do as it's intended to? Also, probably not, but there's only one way to really find out. When I went to go and assemble the ship, something really strange happened. Well, that's, um... Not knowing whether or not this was a bug, I went and tried it on a much smaller ship. And yeah, it was pretty obvious that this was a bug. In fact, this is the first bug I'd ever really come across in one of these programs. But after some internal debate, I found a fitting solution. Huge thanks to Lorem Ipsum over on Planet Minecraft for creating this texture pack. And let's be honest, could it suit the Nile any better? This boat was perfect, and even fit through all the tight parts of the Nile. And so, I headed down the river, ready to explore. And since I had my boat done, I decided that I was going to make a proper stationary base somewhere, as I couldn't really add on to this boat. But that soon didn't matter, as I almost ran into this crocodile. And what better time is there to talk about the infamous Nile crocodile? These Animal Kingdom beasts are the definition of powerful. With a bite force around 8 times greater than that of a Great White, these guys are not to be messed with. Having the status of Apex Predator, there is nothing that is off-limits to these Nile Crocodiles, as they even go after young elephants. 
Needless to say, these crocs are considered to be some of the most dangerous reptiles out there. Next day, I had a few more encounters with the Nile crocodile, before then deciding where I wanted my base to be. I had a perfect idea in my head, but I had to get to the sites that I wanted to build it at. The only hint I'll give you is that it was along the Nile. But with that being said, I soon got distracted by something you've probably been waiting to see. The Pyramids of Giza Everything I have to say about these celebrity monuments you probably already know. These are some of the most recognizable man-made buildings of all time. But that's not to understate the fact that these mega tombs were constructed 4,500 years ago. We are about as close to the death of Cleopatra as Cleopatra was to the construction of the pyramids. In other words, these incredible pillars of mankind are one of our most important achievements. As I walked up to one of them, I spotted an entrance. But given that it was day 26, I decided that I was going to explore the pyramids later on, as I really needed to get started on a base. And so, after camping out near the pyramids, I woke the next morning to some out of place tourists. After I took care of them, I headed back to the Nile. This is when I noticed that the Sphinx looked rather creepy in Minecraft. But I guess that's what happens when you try to replicate a human face in a block game. Anyways, I eventually stopped along the banks of the Nile and crafted myself a boat with a chest. And this gave the entire boat a huge upgrade. Yeah, this boat looked really cool. And as I sailed towards the site where I wanted my base to be, I shot at this crocodile. When will I learn? Anyways, that night I finally arrived at where I wanted my base to be. And the next morning, my full plan for the base was realized. I wanted to make a base at the top of this giant sandstone mountain. And so, the first step to that was to make an easy way to get to the top. I gathered lots of wood and began on what would be one of the stupidest buildings I have ever done. I did end up getting about a third of the way done with the giant staircase. And on day 29, I did some more mining and building. And yeah, I was very high up. But I completed another third of the structure. And finally on day 30, I finished the Great Staircase of Egypt. And I will say, the view from the top was pretty cool. Except this is when I realized that I had left my bed at the bottom of the staircase. And so, down I went. But I decided to stay down here anyways and collect some more wood for my base. The next morning, I decided that I wanted to show you all just how long it takes to walk up my staircase. And so, without further ado, this is a real-time example of how long the Great Staircase takes to climb. Yep. Still, still going. Mm hmm. Yeah. My hash browns should be ready in a minute now. Yep. There we go. That is the great staircase. After that eventful moment, I got started on my base. And for this base, I had a pretty cool but modest idea in mind. Either way, I think you all will like the final product. The next day, I started on the awning of my base, which I wanted to be made out of leaves. I also got started on my flooring. Eventually, I ran out of wood. And by the time I got down the staircase to the trees, it was already sunset. Yeah, I was starting to regret the giant staircase. Day 33 was another building day as I got some more oak wood and finished most of the outline on my base. I was planning on exploring the pyramids the next day though, and so I got as much done as I could. And on day 34, I got ready to set off. But this involved me going back down the staircase, 
Still not as bad as, um, staying on the glass platform in the Sears Tower in Chicago. I guess it's Willis Tower now. Eventually, I started heading up the Nile. And this is when I realized that, despite the staircase, my base was actually really helpful. See, it was more or less in the middle of the Nile, meaning that I could use it as a launching point to get to all the places I had explored already. Anyways, I ended up passing my farm from day one, and then eventually I made it to the largest pyramid by nightfall. On day 35, I awoke to some more annoying tourists, but this didn't matter, as I was about to explore the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid, or the Pyramid of Khufu, is the largest of all Egyptian pyramids, and contains many tunnels within. These tunnels consist of the Queen's Chamber, and the Grand Gallery, that leads directly into the King's Chamber. And while all three locations might look modest today, we can only imagine what they might have looked like 4,000 years ago. And as I explored these tunnels myself, I was quite interested by what I saw. So this is, uh... This is the Queen's Chamber, isn't it? And this is the King's Chamber, alright. However, after I'd finished exploring the tunnels, I found another tunnel on the opposite side of the pyramid. And this is where I got a fun jump scare. Is that the last- uh, no, it's not. Okay, good. Ooh! This tunnel was a lot more elaborate, albeit fictional. But it did make for some fun exploring. I got some interesting loot, and then found this small tunnel that led to nowhere. The next day, I found myself at what seemed to be a parkour area. You know, back in the day, I was actually really good on, um, on Mana Cube. I used to be great at parkour, but then I just stopped doing Minecraft as much. I guess it's time for me to get back into it, huh? There we go. It's interesting, isn't it? Just how the scope of the game has changed. I mean, I've lived through every single cycle of the game, and that's just really interesting to think about. After my incredibly skillful display, I found myself at what seemed to be the treasure room. And there was lots of loot. And mob spawners. Oh, and I had just thrown out my pickaxe. So what did that mean? I got to go all the way outside the pyramid, get some wood, craft a new pickaxe, and go all the way back in. Oh yeah, and I had to redo the parkour. But finally, I arrived back in the treasure room, and I got to work disassembling the shiny center display. And this thing included diamond, emerald, and gold blocks. Next morning, I exited the pyramid and took a look at the second pyramid. This one is known as the Pyramid of Khafra, but this time I didn't have any historic tunnels to go through. Instead, I found a rather large room where I could tell a boss battle was waiting for me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, choices, right? Um, well, uh, what, what if I just don't want to summon anything? Fine. I will summon something, but I'm, I'm taking precautions. That's not how you spell pharaoh, is it? Either way, I think, I think I probably want to start with this, won't I? Maybe go down the line. Should, should I run from you? Okay. This pharaoh boss hit me for half my health. Which helped me decide to leave the pyramid as soon as I could. Don't know how to open doors, do you? But I definitely planned on going back and defeating him later. Anyways, I approached the third and final pyramid, known as the Pyramid of Menkora. But I didn't see any tunnels in this one. Anyways, I figured that it was about time for me to head back to my base. And so, the next day, I walked back to the Nile. I was definitely planning on finishing the boss battle and exploring the Sphinx later, but for now, I need to get more of my base done. And besides, I hadn't even touched the eastern side of Egypt yet. Anyways, I was happy with the loot that I got, and I arrived back at my base that evening. And the next morning, I got some more wood. Before building my house up some more. And it was looking good so far. On day 40, I planted this palm sapling that I had found, and then discuss the difference in creative building versus hardcore building. Building in, I guess, hardcore survival, whatever, it, it's not always fun, is it? I guess that's kind of the point. And that night, as I went to get some more fences, I slept at the bottom of the stairs, as it was once again too late for me to go up them. 
The next morning, I got my roof finished and added on to my newly built hot tub area. I also decided that on day 45, I would go and explore the land east of the Nile. And so, for the next few days, I worked on home improvements. I finished my hot tub, I completed an awning, I made some blinds, and I also made a pretty cool waterfall. In fact, my whole base was starting to look pretty decent. Finally, day 45 came around, and it was time for me to set off. So, I gathered my equipment and headed down the great staircase. This is when I noticed remnants of what could only have been a sandstorm. Not too worried, I headed up the Nile, and eventually found a spot where I wanted to leave the Nile and head east. The next morning, I headed further east into this rocky desert, and this is when I spotted a very strange creature. Well, hello there. The Jerboa is a rodent that lives in the deserts of Asia and Northern Africa, using its springy legs to jump at speeds of up to 15 miles per hour. But these unique creatures don't just look strange, as they have an even stranger ability of not having to drink water. In fact, these little guys can get all of the hydration they need from the food that they eat, as they're able to absorb all of the water from it. So yeah, these desert rodents don't just look unique, they are unique. But as I headed further into the desert, I realized that I had already used up both of my water bottles. But at least I still had the peace and quiet of the desert. If you're, if you're watching this video, and uh, you're in the younger audience, don't grow up to drive a loud car. Don't do it. It's just, it's, it's dumb. It's really dumb. Cars aside, I spotted water that night. So the next morning, I ventured over to the water and swam across it. Only to end up in an area with redder sand. And this could only mean one thing. I was in the Sinai Peninsula. The Sinai Peninsula covers this part of Egypt, and is also the only part of Egypt located on the continent of Asia. But apart from its location, the Sinai Peninsula actually played a vital role in the ancient world. Not only was it essential for ancient trade routes to Egypt, but it is also believed to be where the biblical event of Exodus occurred. Anyways, as I walked through this historic territory, I was focused on something else. Was this Basalt? 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 I feel like everyone has three different ways to pronounce any of the items in this game. Elytra, Elytra. The next day, I gathered some red sandstone for my hot tub floor, and then went exploring some more. I eventually found the shore, where I decided to do some inventory management. And on day 49, I explored some more, only to uncover something interesting. The Wadi El Weshwash is a group of freshwater springs within the mountains of the Sinai Peninsula that are maintained through rainwater. In real life, this hidden oasis is pretty hard to get to, but once travelers arrive, they are greeted with surprisingly blue water and natural beauty. As I explored the area, I came across this kayak, which had some pretty decent loot. I then set off out of the mountainous region and headed back towards the desert. As I woke up the next day, I realized that it was already day 50. And this is where I normally like to say thanks for watching this far into the video. And if you like what you see, why not subscribe? I also have an exclusive channel membership where you can see videos like me playing Phasmophobia in Minecraft, or me playing hide and seek with my friends in Minecraft Disney World. Also, shout out to Branton Mwangi for having the closest guess as to where this video will take place. But with all that said, let's get back into the video. On day 51, as I walked through the desert, I thought about how best to defeat the pharaoh that I had encountered. I eventually decided that my crossbow would be the best bet, as I could hit him from afar. But my thoughts were paused as I came to the Mediterranean again, and experienced a quick sandstorm. However, neither of those compared to what I would see next. Another pillager camp. The next morning, I snuck up to the camp and started looting. Only this camp had more pillagers than the last. I fought a few of them off, but ended up on top of this tent. Okay. Then I had no choice but to make a run for it. Yet as I got to this body of water, I realized that I couldn't just let that happen. I crafted myself some new leaf armor, a new shield, and a diamond axe. And then, I got ready for revenge. 
But when I woke up the next morning, I had spotted something worthy of a quick detour. Only I couldn't approach the village because of my bad omen status effect. Except that's what I would say if I cared. Truth is, I think raids are kind of fun. And so, let the raid begin. Alright, you guys ready? Here we go. I may have underestimated hardcore raids though, because I got really low during the first wave. This led me to run to the sea for water. But on day 54, I got a bit more serious. I changed into my Roman armor. And this led me to defeat two more waves of the raid. The only downside was that I couldn't stay outside for long, as if I did, I would overheat because I wasn't wearing my leaf armor. But that didn't matter too much, as I went on to survive the third wave. Honestly though, I can't even take credit for this wave, because I forgot how OP these iron golems can be. Yet as I fought pillagers, I came across this saddle on the ground. And the village also had a diamond block that I may or may not have borrowed permanently. Next day, I decided to leave the raid up to the Iron Golems as they were carrying it kind of hard. And besides, I had my own vendetta to tend to. However, due to my new loot, I would be tending to that vendetta in style. I arrived on the outskirts of the pillager base that evening, and the next morning, I named my camel. I think I'll name you Larry. Larry's a good camel name. And then I attacked. I took out a lot of pillagers and looted their tents. I also tried to light their houses on fire, but that didn't exactly work out. Anyways, I broke all of their spawners and completely eliminated them from the area. And with my revenge finally settled, I returned back to Larry with low health, but high hopes. And yeah, it was about time for me to return home for a few days. So we started off towards my base and made it to the Nile by sunset. The next few days were used up by travel, as Larry was a lot slower than my riverboat. But I didn't mind too much, as I would just have to take him to my base this one time. I also didn't mind because the scenery around me was, as always, amazing. We finally made it back to my base on the evening of day 60, and I may or may not have tried to take Larry up the staircase, and then decided that it was a bad idea. Except the next morning, I did take Larry up. You didn't think I'd pass up a risky opportunity, did you? And risky is definitely the right word to use for this. However, we eventually got to the top, and I let him roam free. I then went over to my hot tub and replaced the floor with red sandstone. Yet, when I went to build up my house some more, I noticed that it was in worse shape than I had thought, so I made my roof a little bit better with this awning, and then I started to mine. I decided that I was going to make this place look better before I set off again. Next day, I mined a lot of stone, but didn't find any ores. This didn't stop me from making a cool little work area, and this pathway to my grand staircase. And yeah, things were looking better. On day 63, I worked entirely on the pathway, as I had to get a lot of cobblestone. And that was the same itinerary for day 64 as well. I also ended up breaking almost all of my tools this day. So yeah, that's uh, that's fun. Finally on day 65, I finished the pathway. Next morning, I knew it was time to explore again. And this time, I was going to go and explore the Sphinx. But as I got ready to set off, I found where Larry had wandered off to. There he is. No, Larry. Oh no, Larry. Anyways, I got to the Nile and gave a little greeting to this hippo. And I might as well mention that today, hippos are unfortunately extinct in Egypt. But they were definitely around in the ancient era. Anyways, I eventually arrived at the Sphinx. And when I did, I found some strange artifact remnants. I also found a serpent charmer book and some armor. After collecting loot, I mined a lot of mud bricks and terracotta for me to use back at my base. Eventually though, my inventory filled up and it was time for me to move on from the Sphinx and towards the Pharaoh. After camping near the pyramid, I entered the tunnel. Only this time, there were lots of other mobs for me to deal with as well. But eventually, I started my crossbow plan. 
Okay. Alright, here's my plan. And it actually worked pretty well. That is, until I ran out of arrows. And at this point, I decided to fight him on more of a level playing field. But I knew that if he hit me just twice, I would be done for. So I ran out of his range. And then I dealt the final blows. And I had defeated the Pharaoh. He dropped this helmet, which, after putting it on, turned me invisible but also produced these sand particles. I thought this was really cool. But I wasn't done quite yet, as I wanted to do something I've always wanted to do. I began climbing the Great Pyramid. And once I finally reached the top, there the we view go. was, as expected, pretty amazing. Oh, that's so cool. That is very cool. Next morning, I collected my things and set off for the Nile again, as I had one more thing I wanted to climb. Back in the beginning of this video, I mentioned how I wanted to climb one of the mountains in the Jebel Elba National Park. And so, that was the direction I was headed in, only this time, I wanted to go by desert instead of Nile. Just like my previous desert outings though, this one was dry, desolate, and honestly boring, but it did look pretty cool. As I crossed the desert though, I eventually spotted something very interesting. Make that two very interesting things. I healed myself up and went out to see what was on these ships. But when I found out what mob was on them, I wasn't very happy. Vindicators can be some of Minecraft's toughest and deadliest mobs, and so I had to be extra careful. After putting my bed on the water, I woke the next morning and was able to break their spawner. Given that the rest of them had despawned, I boarded the ship and looted it. And this ship had a lot of food, but also gunpowder. Anyways, my sights were soon set on the larger ship. And so, I rode up to it, but heard a lot more Vindicators in this one. So, it was time for me to come up with a plan. On day 73, I rode back to the shore and got started on my new simple but smart plan. And you'll see where I'm going with this pretty quickly. With all said and done, I had 11 pieces of TNT at my disposal. So, I rode back out to the big ship and placed them all around it. I also snuck on board and was able to get them placed over the lower deck, which is where the Vindicators were. And then, I lit a few of them. Only, they didn't really do much damage. And the sun had already started to set. And the next morning, I was frustrated with the lack of explosions. So, I found a way to fix that. It's not about the loot, it's about sending a message. <laughs> what are you now? Other than Ash. Anyways, um... I wanted to climb that mountain. Next morning, I woke in the Jebel Elba region and cooked some food. My goal was to climb the tallest mountain I could find and I soon found one that fit that description. The climb was not easy. But eventually, I made it to the top. Only realized that this was not in fact the tallest peak. And so, I went to the tallest peak and climbed again. And I reached the top just in time. After waking up to yet another amazing view, I now had the task of getting down the mountain safely. And I did, but it took a long time for me to do so. But it was time for me to head back to the Nile. And the next day, I reached it. I refilled my waters and started back down the Nile towards my base. I made it back on day 78 and took Larry for another risky climb. 
As I got back to my base, I decided to wall off the waterfall so that he couldn't fall down it again. I also placed this bench in my work area. And then that evening, this happened. That's so cool, you can see the Nile from here. Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't. I really, I don't have anything to say right now. Next morning, I got to work on a mine building. I wanted to make something modest, but kind of cool. And I don't think I hit that. I really hope Styx, my builder, does not watch this video. At least this far into it, because, um, he, he would have some things to say. I also wanted to make an armor stand for my pharaoh headpiece. But I was quickly distracted by something else. I saw you... What are you? Anyways, I built my armor stand, and I thought it looked pretty good. And that evening, Larry seemed to be teasing me. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Don't do it. Unless you just want to come back from the dead. It's kind of common in this part of the world anyways, but still. On the morning of day 80, I figured out that my waterfall also doubled as a trash chute. And then I tried my hand at archaeology. Yeah, that went great. But finally, it was time for me to get ready for one last trip. And this time, I wanted to take the Invincible Larry. So, the next morning, I got Larry... And I decided to take his favorite path. And I guess this is where I invented camel surfing. But honestly, this was pretty fun. Anyways, Larry and I ended up exploring behind my base this time. And that's when I realized that my base was a lot further east than I had thought. I could see the red sand on the other side of this body of water. But I ended up seeing something else as well. I left Larry by the water and went over to the structure. This thing had a lot of bookshelves which I looted as I wanted to make my own bookshelves. And then, I went to sleep, only to continue looting the next day. I climbed up further into the building and collected some note blocks, right before this fun jump scare. Okay. The loot here was fine, but the coolest part was realizing that the building I was in was a lighthouse. And it actually worked. I'm not gonna lie, this was really cool to see. But after jumping into the water below, I reunited with Larry and set off in a new direction. However, on day 83, Larry and I soon realized that there was nothing really new about this direction. The same desert landscape was all around us. But I didn't mind too much, as it's not like I was running out of hunger or thirst anymore. Thank you, Larry. Well, that sounded sarcastic. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, I, I just, I can't not sound sarcastic. Anyways, on day 84, Larry and I got ourselves in another mini sandstorm, and then continued straight on, and eventually ended up at the Sphinx. So, I pushed Larry across the Nile, and this time headed south of the pyramids, a place that I hadn't gone yet. And finally, the next day, I found something interesting. The Pyramid of Djoser is one of the oldest stone constructions in Egypt. This ancient structure was made around 4,700 years ago and was designed by one of the world's first notable architects, Imhotep. And as I approached the early pyramid, I found some company. This wandering trader was selling a really cool looking sapling and some orange sand. So I bought both. But Larry and I continued onward right into the desert, just to see where the land would take us. Only on day 86, I realized that, once again, there was a lot more desert. But this shouldn't come as a surprise, because, according to Britannica, Egypt is about 96% desert. So, in other words, I should be lucky that I even discovered some bodies of water later this day. I ended up setting up camp here, and the next morning, I crafted some newly farmer. I had no idea where I was, but it didn't really matter, as Larry and I set off right back into the desert. And that evening, I spotted a familiar sight in the distance. Somehow, we had found ourselves back at the White Desert National Park. But this was fine with me, as there was somewhere nearby that I wanted to take Larry. So, 
we took a look around and then continued further forward. In the afternoon, we arrived at the Siwa Oasis. Next morning, we headed towards the village and arrived there later that day. This is when I decided to take a few things that my house was missing. On day 90, Larry and I finished looking around the village, and I finished gathering what I needed. And then it was time for us to head back to the base in one last trip. But I wanted to see the pyramids one final time. So we headed in the direction that I thought they were in. And after more desert travel, on day 91, it turns out I was right. We had made it to the pyramids for one last look. And I may or may not have climbed one of them with Larry. Yeah, getting down it was even more fun. Anyways, Larry and I said our goodbyes to this world wonder and started our travel home. We traveled along the Nile for the next few days, and so while we do that, I feel like I'm ready to go ahead and rate Egypt's difficulty. Egypt wasn't the hardest location I've done, but it wasn't the easiest either. The crocodiles were some of the most aggressive mobs I've dealt with, and the dangers of the desert are not to be understated. But with that being said, I give Egypt a solid 6 out of 10 on difficulty. Now with that aside, we arrived at my base on the evening of day 96 where I had just enough time to get Larry up the stairs. And the next morning, I started on my final home improvements. I planted the rainbow sapling, replaced my blinds, and did a bit more housework. I also waited that night for mobs to spawn so that I could kill skeletons to get bone meal in order to make the sapling grow faster. And so, the next day, I crafted the bone meal and applied it to the sapling which grew into a really cool looking tree. Needless to say, I was happy with how my base had turned out, even if it wasn't the most extravagant of bases that I've done. I made some bookshelves and added my riverboat to the hot tub, because why not? And then the next morning, I got some wood to finish the bookshelves, which ended up looking pretty okay. At least my interior was done. And I guess so was the base. And that brings me to day 100. I found Larry, and I walked with him while we looked out over the mountain. And I couldn't help but think about how amazing the last 100 days have been. Larry, it has been an honor, and with that being said, it is time for me to end. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you all in the next video.